I'm Adam Calloway. I'm at uh, NCBA 2014 in Nashville, Tennessee. We're at Cattle Chat Corner at the Noble Foundation Grow Safe booth. I have three of the beef ambassadors. So I guess I want to know a little bit about each of you first, okay? I'm Tori Summy. I'm from Arizona, and I actually grew up in an urban setting. So I got to learn about agriculture and farming through um, just beef farmers and ranchers sharing their story. Good. I'm Sierra Jepson. I grew up in Amanda, Ohio, which is in central Ohio. We raised 70 head of Angus commercial cattle and also 1,000 acres of corn, wheat, and soybeans. My name is Rachel Wolters. I'm from Tennessee. I grew up about an hour south of Nashville on my family farm, and currently I'm a student at the University of Tennessee, where I'm majoring in animal science. Good. Well, now tell me, what is a beef ambassador? Well, as beef ambassadors, we actually get the privilege of traveling around the country and sharing our love and passion for beef and just being a spokesperson for the beef community and the wonderful farmers and ranchers that have a passion for it. So when does that process start and how did you become one? We were put into ambassadorship in September and we get the opportunity to serve until next September. And we all served as ambassadors in our respective states, um, starting at different stages of our lives. And we're just really privileged to have this opportunity. So let's talk a little bit about the agriculture industry, since y'all are spokesladies for the agricultural industry. Uh, let's start with um, a commercial that came out this last year. Commercial really uh, it was by one of those burrito companies, and it really portrayed agriculture as a factory. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw that? Well, for me, it was a little bit difficult to, to see that image being portrayed to our consumers because I am a producer of beef as a product. and. I'm not a factory, you know, producing beef is something that my family does and has always done. And so I think that the consumer needs to realize that we are people and yes, it is our job, but we're so passionate about what we do and it's more than a job, it is a lifestyle. We're not just, you know, a factory producing a product, we're people that are very passionate about producing beef. How do you think uh, consumers uh, view that in particular, the idea of animal welfare and what it means. So for us on family farms, we see the animals as more of an extension of as our families. We, on my family farm, the, the animals eat before we do, and we see those animals as one of our biggest assets. And my dad always told me that our lifestyle is out in those fields. It's not just us feeding other people. That's our livelihood, too. So what we really want to tell consumers is that we wouldn't feed anything to their families that we wouldn't feed to our own. And we feel very safe and very comfortable and very confident in the product that we're able to give to their families. So how do we change the perception? I think we just need to continue doing the things that we're already doing and just share our passion but vocalize that a lot more. Um, a big thing we talk about lately is millennials and focusing the generation that's so social media oriented and networking. And I feel like our farmers and ranchers have done a great job of that already but we just need to continue telling our story, sharing our passion and sharing our families too because consumers need to know that we care just, about, uh, just as much about them as uh, they do. Well, you're all millennials, so let's talk about your generation and what's happening. What is the future of agriculture then? What do you hope you see? So as a millennial, we are a part of this generation, like Tori said, that's very connected through technology. And so I think the technology is going to be a, f a huge part of the future of agriculture, whether that's through like technological advances or um, like things like genetic modifications that we all think of in a bad way or the media portrays in a bad way, but those are actually going to be the things that are going to bring our culture forward and help us overcome those obstacles that we see in our future. So let's talk about the role of technology a little bit since y'all are very technologically savvy. I assume you all have uh, smartphones? Yes, and so and are, do you have apps on there that are focused on livestock or agriculture? Yes. Now, on those of you that have been from family operations, uh, tell me, do those uh, data collection, those areas that you get data and information from, are you using them to help make decisions? Yeah, today we actually learned a little bit more about the Cattle Facts app, and that's a really great tool for beef producers especially. Um, we're able to track economic demand, we're able to look at what's happening in our fields and what our yields are going to be in the future, and we can really see what's driving demand and see what our consumers want, because we really want to provide those products that they're looking for and be able to give it to them in a way that they're prepared to take and that they're really excited about just as much as we are too. What, what area do you hope that we can gather more information and more data on moving forward in the future that could really impact an operation? 
Well, I think as far as our operations go, we just need to know what the consumer is thinking. And we really hone in on that. A lot of the th discussions that we've been talking about here at um, the cattle convention is just how we can better communicate with our different consumers. And um, so I think if we just gather more information on what they want, what they're thinking, and be able to portray our story more, um, that'll really help. Uh, what's the biggest challenge coming up in the next 20 years? You know, I think that uh, Tori really hit the nail on the head is that communication. I think that there's a lot of, um, you know, negative images that we're facing in the media, but if we can communicate our story uh, appropriately, I think that we'll be able to overcome that. But right now, that's a huge obstacle. All right, ladies, last question. If you had an opportunity, you've got all the consumers in the world out there listening, what would you want to tell them? That one thing that you want them to remember? Every night we go home just like them and we want to sit down with our family and feel completely comfortable and happy with the product that's sitting on our table. And we know that we can feed beef products to those families and feel extremely safe and happy with how wholesome and nutritious it is for them. Ladies, thank you so much for stopping by Cattle Chat Corner.